Hello everyone, this is the third installment of the ETH Online 2022 workshops that we are having and this one is an interesting one. We are leveraging the showrunners framework from EPNS to create an NFT notification layer basically. So if you have any notification or communication that you want to come from your NFT related project that you are building throughout the hackathon, this is the workshop that you can uh, you know literally hear or maybe if you are hearing the recorded version here again. So this is the workshop where I'll be live coding and you know walking through the whole procedure of how we use showrunners framework to create a channel basically i'll start with what's what is the importance of the showrunners framework so basically if you are not having that a heavy back end or you are not you know in a very good state to create a channel on your own back end you can use the showrunners framework on which you can host your notification logic on the epns back end servers so for showrunners framework i'll introduce how we usually roll and how we usually do things in the live coding workshops just for like the basic uh, we are coding a channel called Digital. They are our uh, official collaborations, and you know the NFT and the use cases will be an offer accepted for your NFT basically. So you'll be notified that your offer that you put up for an NFT or a buying an NFT is accepted now, and you have got the notification that your you have got the access for the NFT now. You have bought the NFT successfully. So this is the EPNS website. I saw this one to be like the first you know starting point of the workshop now i'll be switching around to you know like my coding part of things so just uh, it will be like a bit of a switching uh, i'll code uh, in my vs code background so just vs code background coming in three two one and i guess the vs code background is live now uh, so yeah this is the boilerplate that we are using right now and i'll be explaining throughout what will be the procedure throughout the process so with epns showrunners we have four specific folders and four folders that we use to operate the one is the channel.ts file this contains the channel logic and how the channel will run what are the specific events that will be triggered when a channel logic is run or how a notification will be sent the second is the jobs file so basically you'll have a channel logic but when will it run or will it run you know on a chronological manner for that we have our cron jobs or chronological jobs using the node schedule module and we run the channel logic on you know the sweet spot that you found if you have an nft project maybe every 30 second your channel logic should run so basically this is the jobs file for that then we have the db file the database file it's also called the model.ts file this will have any kind of data that you want to store temporarily to keep your logic running and as a programmer we always try to qa stuff we try to test stuff before you know getting into prod or releasing the notifications for them so this is the routes file for that so basically routes will be a file that we'll be using once we are done with you know all the things uh, with the coding part and then we'll be simulating a notif which we'll also be covering in this workshop so i'll be start explaining this like whole throughout the procedure and how we'll work you know to get a channel logic running so this is a boilerplate we introduce a class for you know the channel name class i'll basically rename this to you know digible workshop maybe because i like this expression then we have the network to monitor so basically throughout you know uh, monitoring an event created on your smart contract you'll have to get the smart contract hosted in which networks basically so i'll go uh, we have this fixed up on uh, like basic code running part so i guess we have uh polygon in this one so basically i'll choose the polygon mainnet rpc we are currently you know supporting many evm compatible chains polygon is one of them both mainnet and mumbai testnets are available now on the epn assurance framework then you have to name your channel which is digital workshop uh then a normal url i guess i'll get a url from my assets that i have saved throughout the workshop so this is the url that we'll use this is the like the main website for digital so this pretty much defines how we are classing out a channel so we are created a specific class for this channel and this will be remembered as you know the specific channel code that you have to run so this initializes the initial boilerplate now i'll be explaining why i have created these functions because you know a white white screen will be a better choice but this will explain you know the primary logic of how i'll you know transfer or send a notification for a successful event basically so you know in showrunners we basically monitor your contracts to get the specific event for which we want to simulate a notif 
on a non techy terms we are you know trying to send a notification when a specific task is done in this case is uh, this task is offer accepted on your nft basically so what we'll be doing is we'll be getting latest blocks from your smart contract we'll be getting the blocks and we have some block numbers from the previous transaction mm -hmm. saved on you know a basic db so mm -hmm. this functions is you know defines uh, getting the latest block that was saved in your db this one's defines you know the getting block number from the smart contracts that you have and this function is basically the whole channel brain or the channel logic which will you know trigger a note for a certain event so throughout this i'll be coding uh, you know the logic for this so we'll first start with you know getting the latest block number from db so like what is getting the basic you know block number from db how can i explain that so i have created a model file where i am saving a block number for offer expect accepted on the number format this is the model file and i basically export it here and import it here to access that block number saved in my file so you know we'll also just a small note i will need to brainstorm throughout the code logic because this is a live coding workshop and also i will be doing log info so that i know all my code is working well when i try to simulate it so i'll be getting late i'll be log infoing this part getting latest block from db uh, just some programmer ethics uh, i think you guys must know this one so basically after that i'll you know define my data which is const data uh, and this is where i use my model file which i imported here basically so i'll you know do the await function i'll do digible model which is the first one and then do this so all these functions are also available on our documentation i'll be you know pinging you with the links on discord after this workshop and i hope that you find our documentation really well because we just revamped our documentation and we have been really specific for being developer friendly and i hope uh, you know the experience while using or reading the documentation is not a boring one it's it should be helpful is it's what we strive for so we'll be doing block basically this is kind of the naming format which we'll follow throughout the logic uh, we just cut the block here and we'll try to you know return this but we'll also do a log info to you know get the what block i had previously if i want to you know tilt my logic or do something like that so i'll say data is basically this variable which was my data variable i'll just make sure that i'm audible uh, if someone can you know give me the heads up if i'm not you are sure thanks i hope you are uh, you know getting all the functions so this is basically a very small two line function to get the data or get the block number which i am saving throughout my channel data after that a uh, very small function and a very uh, like interesting one done then we move on to you know getting the block numbers from the contracts uh, this is a tricky one to be honest but i'll be you know keeping in mind to uh, getting uh, like creating the routes gaps also so that i can simulate a notif on my end whenever i want basically so after that i'll be just you know using uh, this function uh this is a predefined function this is where i'll be coding i'll say basically this dot log info getting my block numbers which i really want to uh, run the code logic after that i'll do the normal function uh some naming things normal await uh, just needed to point out you know the availability and the need of async javascript that we are uh, async typescript that we are using here uh with our sdk we are really compatible with react node and uh, you know all the backends done through node and we are like constantly expanding on the things that we are doing through our sdks and being the compatibility part you know getting the compatibility part i call this function here but with the show runners i guess you'll have to have some kind of proficiency with the typescript even if you don't have that we have a documentation supporting you throughout but i guess like this proficiency will help you throughout your development procedure 
because in these kind of hackathons time is what you really you know miss throughout your development thing so uh, like i'll do like i'm calling the latest block number and saving this uh, for my offer expected thing so basically if you see here i have this latest block for offer expected i'm naming it i'm calling it here and then i am uh, saving it for like from block as a from block so that i know that this is the block that came from my save db option so uh nam some spelling mistakes now. uh so i'll be doing the simulate throughout so that i can you know change or tilt any like any time that i want to you know create or simulate a note because throughout this there is not a protocol right now who is doing these transactions it's just me trying to get a notification for a like imaginary transaction so uh, what i'm doing is basically i'm creating that gap so that i can you know use them throughout my logic i'll uh, you know i'll explain this line once i complete this one this is a complex one uh simulate dot and i'll be naming this one maybe uh first the logic override part and then from block yep some uh this is what i'm doing throughout the workshop that uh, i'm you know getting that from block offer accepted so basically i'm getting that block number which was saved in my db to you know compare it through uh, my whole system monitoring uh aha finally i'm i'm started you know getting all the the recommendations for what i have to type oh wait and this is where i do the good stuff get block number and maybe finishing this up with this i hope got i see no errors i'll be you know explaining this part so basically what we are doing is we are like you know created a logic override function so that we can you know anytime get a similar or like a dummy block so that i can tell my logic that this is the block that i want to simulate right now so that i can create a notif also while fetching a notif either from my db or if not if there is no like block number saved on my db i use the get block number function to get the notifs uh, get the block numbers basically so uh, i'll just you know uh, format it a bit out uh after this maybe well this looks clear though i'll i'll do this also so yeah pretty much done with this function also i'll be just be you know doing the two block part basically so you know i have saved the two block part i'll try explaining that one uh so what basically is the two block part is i'll do this so this is the block that you know i am comparing it to through our contract provider basically this is not the block which is saved in our db you can see like no mentions of db here this is the block that i'll fetch from this like the smart contracts that i'm monitoring and i'll compare to this block and if there is a new block there is a new event and if there is a new event you want a notice from epns so this is how a basic logic is looking and working throughout you know the epns part of things and then i'll do my all my output things so i do cons at number contract dot provider dot get block number give me this function and i'll do this I don't have to log anything right now though I'll do once again uh data is fetch check maybe this one is also a better option just to check throughout that what you are writing is making sense and will run like 
on a complete manner throughout your workshop so i'll do this log dot info many times and uh mind you that this is kind of a complex channel which we are covering because you know there are integration but you know you, your project is a newer one when you come to hackathon so basically every project is different and for every project epns wants to create a notif so we are trying to cover this throughout uh, so basically we we'll, you'll see me like stuttering sometimes but it's just me brainstorming throughout a live coding workshop so uh, i hope uh, i'm clear right now and my voice is looking clear so after this return a result so basically i'll be now getting through these functions a block number which was saved in my database and a block number which was you know fed through my smart contract basically so this is how the you know the whole procedure for this function will look and i hope like uh, you guys are clear i'll just go through the format again so basically here we you know called the latest block number from database uh, like and then from this side we called a block number which we saved on a specific database and then a block number which we fetched through a smart contract basically so this defines how we are saving data how we are comparing data but what about the notification logic what like when will that come basically this is that brain file so i have add up a comment that to like this function is to alert a user if their order has been like offer has been accepted so basically with nfts just like uh, introduction to this function because this is going to be another complexer one uh, we'll have to gather the names around right we'll have to get the names for the nft we have to get the abi for the contract so we'll have to you know transfer many jsons to our code base uh, some jsons which are really necessary some jsons are the erc 20 json abis to you know get the name uh, 721 320 any kind of uh, jsons or abis that we need you know to get the name for the nft that we are transferring so basically we always get that from like the it's a kind of open source data so i'll be you know transferring some of that database here so i'll thoroughly show you what i transferred just now uh, after i paste and i see the data here uh, yeah so these are like the four jsons that i've added uh, interesting why are these jsons here so first is the digital settings dot json what is this json this json is basically the contract addresses that i want to monitor throughout my you know channel logic so there are like two contract addresses for two different functions basically for this one we usually uh, you know have to get the trade dot json because this is like the specific one for this event other than that we have a erc721 json for getting you know the names for the nft and then we have an erc20 json to you know getting uh, the token for which the payment has been done so this you know enhances the user experience throughout your code basically you will be giving the user a name for his like what nft did he trade because a token id will not be a very good experience for a user while will will he want a notification with different token ids for his nft it will not be like a proper Uh, user experience so that's why we usually you know strive for getting every data which we can present in a short crisp notification that's why we have done here that's what we have done here so basically we have the contract addresses now which we have to monitor we have the abis to get the specific events that we have to monitor then we have the abi for you know the nfts which are erc20 and the tokens erc721 so basically we will monitor the names here we'll monitor the events here and we'll need the contract addresses to monitor the events throughout so this is how our channel like logic and file structure will look after you know the whole implementation basically so now we are doing the mammoth task of writing the whole channel logic basically so we do a very good thing which is try and catch error functions because you know they are the, uh, the best things to have if you like have to crack a logic for a notification basically so we'll be doing that them uh, like the, in the first implementation so i'll have a try function here and then i'll have a catch because they usually go hand in hand so i'll have a catch error function yeah you'll have to get you know all the things in mind when you create a logic even if like one code goes out of line you'll have to get you know the information about what went wrong when you like coded this throughout your like file structure so basically i'll do a normal this dot log info to announce that i'm starting to code a channel logic now 
so I'll do the first thing which is fetching events offer accepted so basically this is the event that I'm fetching ah what's there now damn why is it wanting a comma here yep I hope it results now damn such silly things um, so after this I'll and that I've announced that I'll try to you know gather the functions and you know uh, monitor or uh, event which is happening in the digital contracts basically so yeah this is a new function that we have introduced in our framework first it was in SDK but we have revamped the show runs framework so basically in EPNS helper class we have a this dot get contract function now uh, what it does it you know gets the information for the specific contract that you want you'll just have to provide it you know the contract addresses and the ABI for that specific contract basically so what I'll do is basically I have the addresses stored in my settings file I'll go through that just once I'll do digible settings from and now every file transfer will make sense after a point of time because I'll you know need every JSON to do something for me uh, this digital settings will be used here and what is the one that I need here I need the digi trade contract main net address because this is an event happening in the main uh, digit rate contract ABI basically so after this I'll have one more thing which is my ABI to you know uh, satisfy all the needs for the function which is so I'll stringify the JSON for the code to be using that and I have to import the digit rate ABI now Where is Digitrade ABI? Done. I just imported the Digitrade ABI and I'll stringify that so that my all so now digital like the this dot get contract function is satisfied because he, they got all their input requirements. I have to give them a provider and then the contract ABI for that. So now this is like the variable that will have access to my contract and what is happening then I'll put up a filter here basically what is a filter filter will you know get the specific function uh, even that I need to you know monitor basically then I'll go digital contract dot and you are uh, like seeing the amount of ether js web 3 and typescript that we are using throughout the code base this is kind of the thing that I'll advise like advise you to you know get your a bit of an introduction to them so that basically you go through all the basics for the coding part and then you'll be able to implement this really easily uh, this is the function uh, this is the event that we need to monitor basically I'll just do a control F here and I'll uh, you know show you so this is the function uh, the event that we are monitoring this is the inputs that the function is taking so basically these are the inputs that we also will also display on our notification and this is the whole function that will be an uh, event that will be monitoring throughout our code logic so I put up a filter here on this event and then I'll you know move forward for getting this uh, you know block numbers for this specific event basically so I'll do also we usually follow the camel case throughout uh, code base basically so if you like need to drop a PR on uh, the shortness framework repository to get your channel on uh, you know the EPNS Shortness Framework you'll have to follow some of the basic things that uh, basic rules that we have uh, not a, like a too bit of a drag but still 
if you follow them it will be a uh, like an easier part for us to QA your channel and then deploy if you want us to and I'll do digital contract dot done so I'm fetching the block numbers now uh, now comes you know the logic part of things uh, I've gotten like the logic uh, the block number for this specific event which is trade done through the ABI that I called here which is the digit rate ABI and also the contract addresses that I use through my settings.json now what when will I trigger this notif so a normal if and else which runs every programmers life basically so I'll do block numbers if block number dot two block is greater than block number dot the from block of our accepted block so basically if there is a new block added for this specific event I'll try to create a note for it uh, as easy as it, as it gets so basically what I do is I'll you know gather all the block numbers and the things that I want to you know put as a query filter basically so query filter here and I'll put up the filter the block numbers which I'm using block number from and also the two block number ah I hope this runs fine no yeah no errors so yeah we have also done you know the basic logic of triggering notifs now we'll start to you know go through that events get some information and then trigger a notif maybe like the triggering the notif part comes uh, as a cherry on the cake after you are like through with all the parts that you have to you know get to simulate a notif basically then I'll go you know if like there are many uh, callings or arguments for these events like if there are many events called I'll do a triggering for every one of them so basically I'll what I'll do is I'll go through every ah uh, for const p in events basically I'll again do a try and catch error function yep uh, so we did a try dot catch yep so we'll pause here a bit if uh, I'll make sure that my voice is clear and if there are any queries any specific queries throughout the channel yep so I hope my voice is clear now I'll be coding further now comes you know the good part of the coding basically I'll go through the events I'll you know get the uh, whole event being called and then uh, like format my notification how they are coming and maybe then we'll have a good notification coming from the digital NFA trial channel ERC 20 contract I'll show you what I'm doing once I you know start doing the whole thing so now I'm trying to get the names for the token being exchanged and everything happening throughout that part. So basically I'll do await and I'll get the ERC contracts basically. But why am I doing it? I'll just show you through the events 
arguments that why do we want to you know fetch this contract basically so when you go to this digi trade event and see the trade done yep this is the event when you see you know this address and these are the address which i want to you know get uh, as my uh, like as my notification output or i'll see the erc 20 quantity offered or requested or token ids i want to get these names right i want to get all these addresses and then i want to get fetch their name so that a user you know has an easy experience throughout their notification so what i'll be doing is that i'll go into e dot args and go to out of two so basically it depends on your smart contract the digital smart contract has this argument on uh, you know the second iteration so i do a json dot stringify and i'll input ABI here so yeah pretty much ERC20 JSON uh, implemented here I'll have the ERC20 ABI to stringify it Everything is working fine. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. Uh, what's the matter? What's the error here? Uh, we have the args. Yeah, everything looks fine to me, but I'll do one thing, I'll check it again. Damn, I'm getting some heat from this program actually. Ah, now it's done. It was in here. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. I'll get the name for ERC20, which I did this all for. Yep, everything working good. So basically, I fetched the ERC20 name here. Uh, this all was done to just, you know, get that name to offer in my notification, basically. So after that, I'll be, you know, judging throughout what's happening here. Uh, now I've got the name. I'll also get the offer amount, basically. So this is, you know, the line for offer amount so i am basically putting all the offer amount to string so that in my notifications covered that through covers that throughout after that i'll put up you know if you know, like my arg or argument is same for the address so i'll put up a notification for that if not i'll you know send a notification through a different format basically so We'll start with this. Yep. So now, what I'll do is basically I'll go through the 721 NFT contract. So to get that name also.
and it'll get the name again basically so this happens again you know just to save time I'm doing this code procedure throughout uh, and I'll import the ERC721 yep done yep done now i have the erc721 contract also the name part will be like actually the same as we did for erc320 basically because erc abis are quite similar yep so this is how i get the name for the tokens that have been exchanged now comes the part where i like you know gather i've gathered the information for the notification now i'll try defining the notification so for notification i've got first i've got first to define the notification title which will be this basically so i'll have the constant title of uh, you know digitrade trade offer accepted basically so like uh, the guys uh, receiving this notification will know that they have gotten a uh, ERC721 contract, yep, yeah, result, and then I'll have the const payload title actually also because uh, you know the payload title is almost the equal thing. We have payload title and payload message. Basically, this payload title also goes to our logs, and then we have the payload message which will be you will be receiving as a longer information which will be the message of the notification. So then I'll have the payload title which is same this I'll repeat this one and then you'll have the message actually and the message will be uh, I've drafted this beforehand because it's like a message that you always require to send for, to a user so I'll do a congratulations your offer for the name that I fetched for the specific events and then uh, has been received for this amount of tokens and this was the name for the specific token then and then I co I'll copy paste this and define this as the payload message actually payload and I guess M is usually on a different format here yep done so this you know concludes how we are structuring the notification down the only part remaining is the function that we are implementing to send the notification function this is the cream for your epns like the whole epns structure the send notification function that we have got so this is the notification type i've pasted this so this is the notification type we are sending an argue like a uh, targeted notification to an uh, argument of this specific address on your ABI this usually you know goes into the wallets that you have so this is like the first wallet that I want to send the notification to and I've defined the title here the payload message and the message here then the payload title I've also given a call to action link for that specific website I'm triggering the notification for uh, now uh, like most of the notification part is done but I want to you know uh, plan myself for notifications that are coming after this and also an else situation because I've created an if logic so I'll use the uh, updation function basically to you know update my database throughout this is the function that we use this is or everything that we'll find on our documentation basically so this is what uh, this function is doing is this updates my latest block that I used here to trigger notif to get a block number or like a different block number the next time uh, so what's happening block number and I hope it's done now. Yep, uh, no errors, hopefully. Yeah, sure. So we were successful in this one. After that, we'll just need a smaller else situation which will have you logging that this, uh, like if you are not doing this, it will happen else this dot log info. No notif need. We did one this one actually. Sure. Yeah, 
so this pretty much concludes how you know the logic part of these are done then i have already you know prepared uh, the docs and jobs file in your documentation part so we'll move forward with that uh, basically this is uh, your code concluding you have now you are now having a code for simulating a notive throughout your digital events that are happening basically so this is how we usually simulate a notive then in model file we already have this in jobs i'll have a cron job running for three hours basically or even one hour we'll try to do one hour here because you know the transaction happening in these cases are usually so i'll just paste this through the documentation that we already have this is the get offer expected i'm using a uh, one hour rule here basically so i'll put that here one hour rule and you'll get everything yep done on one hour and this is done so basically this is how we uh, you know create a cron chronological job to run our functions after that we have my like we have our routes file this is also updated on the database uh, the documentation that we have so this is what the function we usually need for you know getting the routes for this so i'm just uh, like having this function to simulate when uh, you know all my postman files are working right and i have you know tilted the logic successfully for this transaction so this you know concludes my all the coding part now i have got you know to update my keys here to you know get the notification for that specific channel uh, and what i'll do is basically get my private key i tell you watch the json because i don't want to share that uh I'll export this private key. So yeah, you can also always use a private key that is uh, not in like many concerns of your like this is a very specifically created wallet for this workshop, so I can like easily share the private key here. So this is what you basically need. Now I'll try you know running the whole setup. Uh, I'll get my Docker going to run my local setup this is also something of a guide that is you know included in your documentations basically so i'll do yarn run dev and i'll pray that everything goes right after that i'll have a like a block number which was given to me by my smart contract which had this transaction previously so what i'm doing is actually tilting a logic to get that notification done basically so what i'll do is basically have i'll change how i share my screen now so i'll just do one thing yep so i just simulated a notify And now I'll share, you know, the private key that I have, uh, like my database. It's just that my postman is taking time to, you know, going through all the contract and sending the first notification. Uh, apart from that, I guess events, the getting block number data is pretty clear. Yeah, so after this, I'll have my digital box here. Yep. So I'm just waiting for my notification being sent here. I'll give you a preview of how the notifications usually look on our staging app. So I'll do one thing. I'll basically, you know, simulate, try to simulate a notif that 
does not require this amount of data actually because I guess I guess I'm getting a time based error mm, the logic seems fine I'll send a targeted note of here and I'll do hey notification here with uh, maybe hey notification check or here digital notification check here so that I don't you know uh, load my database that more and just get an easy note out of this one Uh, now I'll try simulating this note and then sharing how my postman looks. Yeah, I hope now the notification is sent. Yeah, uh, this is sending notification. So database face is checked. All the notifications have been sent. Uh, but I'll you know try uh, getting all my this to my address that I want to show you in. So I'll get this inbox. I'll get this copied. I'm not showing you the information that I'm putting on the postman because I'm sharing the private key. Uh, send here. And I hope this sends the notification basically. I have sent the notification successfully and I hope I receive that here yep so I'll quickly share the notification that I got yep so this is uh, here is the notification that I wanted and I've got this so this is the notification this is the channel that I created for you know the digital this is a, your direct procedure of getting to the EPNS DAP and now we have successfully you know simulated a notif here we get the sending notification notification sent successfully and we coded the channel logic throughout this so I hope uh, you like the whole procedure and I hope the whole procedure was clear I know I went a bit long it's a 50 minutes workshop now but I hope there are no questions and I was you know really clear clearing all your doubts thanks thanks for having me and I will really want to see some uh, you know uh, pull requests on the shortens framework after this workshop if that helps